It's okay. So say, uh, first of all, thank you very much to the organizer for having me and give me the opportunity to talk about my last work uh, here in this beautiful place. This work was done in collaboration with uh, Gonzalo Sá, Carlo Balseiro, Damian Cianete from Balseiro Institute in Bariloche, Argentina, and also in collaboration with Jose Lorenzana from Sapienza University of Rome. Also, I would like to, to thank uh, my, my fund then from individual Marie Curie Individual Fellowship. Uh, today, I will talk about um, uh, BCS systems. Uh, I think it's a little bit uh, odd out of, of the scope of this session, but I will try to convince you that a still very simple uh, system like BCS um, it show very interesting uh, or conventional or very interesting dynamics and phenomena uh, when you drive it out of equilibrium. Okay, so um, I, I start with this very simple Hamiltonian, uh, the BC Hamiltonian. The first part is the kinetic energy of the electron, and the second part is, is the period interaction between electrons uh, with opposite momentum and spins. And then um, we put a periodic perturbation, for example, in the period interaction of the system, and the question is what happened with the superconducting order parameters. What, what kind of dynamical phases uh, uh, we can get um, by doing this uh, modulation here. In order to analyze um, this problem, it's useful to write the Hamiltonian using uh, boson operators. This spin operator is, and this is the so-called Anderson of the spin formalism. You write this Hamiltonian like this. And because of uh, we are considering here uh, all to all interaction in these second terms, the mean field approximation of this Hamiltonian becomes uh, gives you the, the, exact, the exact solution in the thermodynamical limit. So I will concentrate in the following in the mean field version of this Hamiltonian that can be written in very simple form like this. This is nothing but the collection of pseudo spin in local magnetic fields. And these magnetic fields depends on time. For example, the X component of these magnetic fields uh, has to do with the order parameter of your system. Um, of course, we have uh, interaction between this pseudo spin. If you write uh, the Heisenberg equation of motion for this spin operator, you end up with uh, a block like equation of motion for pseudo spins. And each one of these pseudo spin uh, interacts in a magnetic field that is created for the uh, from, from the old pseudo spin in the system. So you have a total magnetization of pseudo spin uh, defined <coughs> the superconducting order parameters and these magnetic fields, um, the, the pseudo spin evolves in this uh, magnetic field. Okay, so at, at equilibrium, um, what we get is just this uh, um, magnetic field and the pseudo spin texture defining the ground state of your system is just this kind of pseudo spin textures. Uh, which means all pseudo spin are aligned to the magnetic field in order to minimize this Hamiltonian here. So if you have, for example, for very uh, far from the Fermi level and below the Fermi level, this set component is negative and then the pseudo spin point down, uh, very uh, far from the Fermi level, uh, in, the, in the positive part, the set component of this magnetic field is um, uh, is uh, essentially in the set component and positive, and then the pseudo spin point up, and uh, in the at the Fermi level, the pseudo spin point in the uh, align in the x direction. So you have this pseudo uh, spin texture defining the ground state at equilibrium, and also you can plot this pseudo spin texture, for example, in just the positive part of this pseudo spin texture in the blob sphere, and you get this uh, initial condition in the blob sphere, and then the the uh, we, we perturb the system by doing a periodic perturbation in the pair interaction, which means a time self-consistent, a time-dependent magnetic field along the x direction, and then this pseudo spin texture evolves in times, and the total magnetization along the x direction gives you the, the superconducting order parameters. So in order to characterize the different dynamical phases that we can get here, uh, we, we take, uh, we choose uh, 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 the average of the order parameter as an indicator of the different dynamical phase. And then I plot, uh, I will plot um, this quantity as a function of the amplitude and the frequency of the drive. If you do that, uh, you get uh, this uh, dynamical phase diagram. Uh, here, uh, at first look, uh, you, you see two different regions. 
a, a wide one in which uh, the superconducting order parameter is uh, in average very close to, to the equilibrium one, another region in which the average of the superconducting order parameter is close to zero. But in this you uh, see more carefully this dynamical phase here and you realize that you have at least four dynamical phase phases including rabbit Higgs oscillation, Gabler regime, time crystal, synchronization phenomena. So the only of my talk is, to, is just to tour you through this uh, dynamical phase diagram um, and discuss time permitting possible experiment platform to detect these dynamics. All the physics that I will discuss today uh, can be found in this uh, reference here. So let me analyze first what happens if you drag your system above the gap with a relatively small amplitude of the perturbation. So this red feature here. So in this case, the dynamics looks like this. You have the superconducting order parameter show a fast oscillation, and on top of that oscillation, you see a slow modulation. So you get a, not only a, a linear response, if you look at the Fourier transform of the signal, you get this uh, spectrum in which you, you clearly see the drive frequency, but also this uh, new, new low frequency and also satellites associated with these two uh, frequency. So what is the, the origin of this new uh, collective mode here? Uh, the, 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 the answer is very simple. I, indeed, you are driving above the gap, so you are in a resonant conditions, and you have uh, a certain pseudo spin, a, a, a one pseudo spin that is resonant with the, with the drive. So essentially, if you think uh, the system like a collective, uh, many two-level system, you, are, you have a two-level system that match the resonant condition and then this two-level system can perform rabbit oscillation. But it's not all the story because if you have just one spin doing this uh, oscillation, you don't see anything in the total magnetization in a microscopic quantity like this. So what happened in the, this, uh, you have a, a kind of synchronization of many of these two-level systems performing rabbit oscillation, so you don't have, uh, you have uh, more than one or over n effects in this case because this synchronization phenomena, and this can be seen, for example, in this quasi-particle distribution as a function of time, in which you see uh, uh, that you have a, a subset of quasi-particles that perform this rabbit oscillation, not just once, but uh, a subset of quasi-particles, and this population inversion uh, uh, happens as a function of time, producing this uh, low frequency that depends indeed uh, on the amplitude of the perturbation alpha. So this is the first phase. Uh, something different happens if you still drive your system above the gap but with a relatively large amplitude of the perturbation. In this case, the order parameter goes to zero very rapidly in time and remains zero uh, without as any oscillation. So this is very strange because you are driving your system all the time and the system does respond, remains zero. Uh, this uh, phase, what happens here is uh, you have this pseudo spin texture at, at equilibrium and you see this pseudo spin texture in the XY panel, in the XY plane, sorry, you, you have this pseudo spin texture as times go by, this pseudo spin texture evol evolves like this. And at some point, you very rapidly you get this kind of spiral distribution of quasi particle uh, in which you have a Cooper pairs in the system. You have the X component of pseudo spin is non zero. You have a pairing, but you have a very coherent Cooper pairs. So you have a perfect the phase in between all these quasi particle producing this uh, Gabler regime in this case. Okay, so this is a very ordered phase with perfect defacing. Uh, good. So now, what happens if you drive your system below the gap? So in this case, um, the, the, the first things to emphasize here is the, the structure of this dynamical phase theorem. Indeed, you see these very strange structures, this kind of Arnoldton uh, structure here. Uh, every every time uh, the drive frequency match twice delta naught over n, with n a natural number. So this is a kind of parametric resonance appearing uh, by driving your system below the gap. And indeed, the dynamical phase diagram is very, very similar to the dynamical phase diagram of a parametric oscillator, namely a, a, a driven, vertical driven pendula 
in which if you drive your system with a frequency that matches twice the natural frequency over n, the downward position of this pendulum gets stable, and you have this stable uh, region, otherwise this downward position remains stable. So this is the physics of, uh, of uh, Estonian swing or a skateboard in a ramp in which you need to modify your center of mass, for example, here twice in a period in order to gain a, a, a lot of amplitude. So it's, it's curious that uh, these two different uh, um, systems look uh, very similar when you uh, plot the, this dynamical phase theorem. Uh, of course, there are many different because in this case you have um, a, a single particle polling, you have just one degree of freedom, but in this case you have many uh, particle interacting with each other. Um, so, uh, and indeed the, the interaction between this uh, quasi-particle is an essential ingredient to get this parametric resonance. For example, here I show you uh, that if you consider a non-interacting quasi-particle, so the spin in a time-dependent magnetic field, you the, the, the um, dynamical phase theorem becomes tri trivial. So uh, this parametric resonance emerges uh, uh, as a consequence of the interaction in the system. In other words, the pseudo spin, each one of them, does constitute the parametric oscillator, but the parametric oscillator uh, behavior emerges as a consequence of this interaction here. Okay, uh, so let me now analyze uh, the different dynamical phase that we get in this, um, in this regime. For example, what happened outside these Arnold tongues in this orange region. Uh, at, the, at first look, the dynamical um, evolution of the order parameter looks uh, a little bit bored, but if you analyze the Fourier transform uh, of this signal, you get uh, not only the drive frequency, but also high harmonic because this system is very, very nonlinear. And more interesting, you get also this uh, peak here that indeed is equal to twice the, the average of the supernodic order parameters. Uh, so just is something that is related with the subconductive property of the system and not uh, related with uh, drive frequency. And this is called uh, Higgs mode in the literature. Uh, I don't have uh, much time to discuss it, but um, uh, this, this peak uh, emerges again as a consequence of synchronization of this quasi particle in the system. Uh, and it's a collective mode. Inside parametric resonance, what you get is um, a very uh, weird evolution in which the order parameter um, does respond with the drive frequency, but with, with one half of the drive frequency. So you have a time translation and symmetry breaking here. You have period W oscillation. You, this period W oscillation remain um, for, for thousands of local cycles. Uh, this is a very um, robust oscillation in the system. And of course, you have uh, also you have free rigidity of this uh, mode is you move in inside this green region here is you move the, the your your parameter your driving parameters you still get this uh, one all over the uh, the drive frequency over two as a response so this is a very uh, rigid um, response and all these three uh, characteristic or requ are the requirement to to claim you have a time crystal in your system. So what we get here is a time crystal inside this parametric resonance. Uh, oh, oh, just finally, also, if you look at very, very short time, let's say four or three, four local cycles, you still see the main feature of this parametric resonance. This is the, the phase diagram compute a different time window, 0 0.30, 0 0.60, and so on, of course, if you increase the time width in which you compute the average, you get uh, this converged uh, parametric resonance that I showed you before, but still at a very, very short time, maybe before heating or integrality mechanism take place in the system, you still see the main feature of this parametric resonance. Uh, so this opened the door to, to uh, explore this parametric phenomenon, not only in high control system like coal atoms or cavity QED, but also in, 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 in conventional superconductors uh, as a transient effect. Okay, so this is the summary of my talk, uh, the dynamical phase diagram of BCS, uh, of periodically driven BCS system is surprisingly rich. 
Uh, we have uh, Rami Higgs oscillation, Gabler Fechin synchronization phenomena, and time crystal phases. Uh, also, emergent parametric resonance with potential application in parametric amplification, frequency converting, and sensing. And um, uh, more interestingly, this phenomena could be observed with the current technology, for example, using cavity QD, called atom or solid state superconductor. Uh, in particular, these parametric resonance are pretty robust to to you know to relaxation mechanisms because you you can see it at very very short times. So with this, uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Actually, you can see the uh, system in the some sort of the mean field approach here, yeah, which consider how does your result change if you going beyond the mean field and include the quantum fluctuation? Does the oscillation smearing or something like this? What do you think? Okay, th thank you very much for, for the question. Indeed, uh, this is something that we we are thinking about. Uh, indeed, we we have also performed calculation uh, put going beyond mean field. Uh, let me uh, probably, I don't know we have, no, I don't have any, ah, yes. Of course, you, you can uh, include, uh, for example, uh, uh, dissipation mechanism in this system. For example, you can consider that this superconductor is coupled with a bar, and then you, for example, can, can, can uh, do um, perturbation theory, Dyson equation of motion of equilibrium, and then you, at the end of the day, if you consider a, a mechanism going beyond mean field, what happens is all these kind of pieces become transient effects, right? So you have, a, a, of course, a, a time window in which this kind of pieces can happen. And uh, also, you can not only uh, consider this very simple bath, but also you can um, you can uh, consider um, electron electron impurity also whatever you want uh, in this uh, Dyson equation form using perturbation theory of equilibrium using green function and at the end of the day uh, just to have a time window in which this kind of physics can be seen in experimental uh, so. Is there any direction for a possible Josephson effect side in your system? Because the, so like like Josephson. Josephson, like let's say because you have you have very highly non time dependent superconductor, but the Omega core theory was for time independent superconductors. So any any direction to into that way? Yeah, I, I think uh, of course it's uh, pretty nice also to analyze in the same way. You we have analyzed what happened with you couple the superconductor with the bar. Of course, we can uh, try uh, putting here another superconductor coupled with each other. Uh, um, yeah, this is a very interesting uh, open question, I think. What mm -hmm. happened with the dynamic? I, I, I expect a different, uh, different Higgs mode associated with this superconductor and this superconductor, or maybe uh, uh, other parameters uh, that is the sum of the, or yeah, but I think it's an open question to see the, the transient dynamic of this just a small effect. And just another question. So, uh, how about dissipation in your system? Uh, because you have time time dependent system, so any possible use by Kaldish approach and uh, some, uh, you know, can you make any comment into that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You you can also use uh, Kaldish approach. Well, I, I don't know uh, what you mean by Kaldish approach, but uh, what we use is this kind of. Um, at the end, this kind of perturbation theory uh, in time. So, uh, this also called in the chill literature sometimes Kaldish uh, formula. But of course, you have uh, maybe thinking on another Kaldish uh, formula is like, uh, say, more equilibrium stuff. Or yeah, I mean, time, time co complex time, basically, that's what I mean. Right. Yeah. I think Much more is imaginary, right? But I mean, I mean, a complex value time in general, right? I mean, to account for dissipation. And uh, is there any explicit study of quasi-particle dynamics in your system, because they should generate dissipation, right? With, with yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yes. 
Of course, when, when you go off of the equilibrium, uh, what, what I expect is you have a kind of process that you can include perturbably, for example, and see. I, I think uh, probably you, you, you go beyond this uh, transient dynamic. Probably you can imagine uh, a process that, I don't know, maybe you can uh, obtain a different dynamical phase of source, but in general, uh, Nicely speaking, you, you expect dissipation because this uh, perturbation theory, be because this mechanism is going beyond the field. But, uh, yes, so Thank you. Other questions? Uh, time dependent uh, electron phonon interaction. Uh, this one, microscopical parameter, but uh, in your case, uh, this one related with uh, application in an acoustical. Uh, waves in crystal uh, and for this is a time dependent uh, character of electron phonon coupling should be taken into account because in general this one which is microscopic parameter and uh, related yeah. with uh, yeah probably the the more um, yes uh, what you mean is just uh, the the phonon uh, propagator maybe is uh, you can consider that it's a equilibrium is uh, just depend of t minus t prime and non t anti prime. That is mm -hmm. your question, for example. Uh, well, I, I think uh, yes, uh, we can play with uh, this stuff. But what what I'm thinking here is uh, oh sorry, is just um, in um, say residual interaction going beyond. Uh, you know, you have electron phonon system. You have a, a electron uh, a phonon providing superconductivity, but also you have maybe another kind of residual interactions, electron like phonon interactions that provide dissipation or, or in the system. It's the kind of thing that I'm thinking about. Uh,